Welcome. Good day. Hey there. How's it, Mike? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Alpha Technologies Tech Talks, episode four. My name is Noel, and with me in studio today, Michael van Rensburg. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for having me, Noel. Cool. Thanks for being here, Mike. So today we will be discussing the biomp range of Parlay microphones. Michael, what are Parlay microphones and what makes them so special? Well, I think it's uh, all in the name actually, no? Parlay means speak. Oh, right? look at that. It's literally what, what the translation means, or okay. to discuss, right? Oh. So this is a range of, of uh, conferencing microphones that Biomp has developed, and uh, they've been available for, I think, about two and a bit years now. Mm -hmm. And they are based on beam forming and beam tracking technologies. Oh, wow. Wonderful. Okay. Um, so what styles are these microphones available in? Do they come in different shapes and sizes? Yeah, for sure, for sure. And we've got a couple of slides that we can, that we can show everybody. So nice. um, there's, a, there's a three different options, three different main styles available. Okay. The first ones are uh, a ceiling type mic, which is the TCMX. Right. Then there's a table type mic, TTMX. And then lastly, there's also a pendant microphone, which is uh, the TCM1. And that's basically like your typical golf ball mic that mm -hmm. hangs a little bit uh, down from the seating. Now, the TCM uh, TCMX and TTMX, the seating and table mics, we refer to them as the flat mics. Okay. And they sit flush on the seating or flush on the table. Beautiful. And they look good as well, hey? Not your standard, usual little round things that you, no. <laughs> that you and usually see. And, and they have a couple of nice features. They've got an LED ring to show their, their status, so a red for uh, muted or off and a green status or a green ring to show that the mic is active and, and on. Oh, wonderful. As well. So they, they look very stylish. And then, uh, again, of course, they come in white and black options. So you can choose a color that matches more towards the, the table or the ceiling, black or white in that case, so that maybe fits into, into the room's uh, decor. Oh, nice. Black and white. Can't go wrong with those colors. Awesome. So let's get into some details with regards to these microphones, hey, Mike? Talk us through the Parlay TCMX ceiling mounted microphone. Yes. So the, the TCMX is the newer generation um, and the TTMX as well. The TCM1 was the, the, the first generation. Okay. So a couple of differences between TCMX and TTMX is that TCMX um, basically has four zones of pickup. Mm. So once you've installed it into the ceiling, it will basically have four 90 degree zones that the mic will track and form a beam, as we mentioned earlier, towards uh, the participant. So it, it normally picks the loudest voice in, in each of those quadrants um, by some complicated algorithms that Biomp has now written for it. Okay. And a few technologies they've built into, into how the mic responds and works with the DSPs, with the Desira um, range of audio DSPs. And uh, they basically then work out in each zone which is the loudest and it'll start tracking that that voice. So even if you were to get up and, and walk around the room, and this is the same for all, all the versions of the, of the Parlay mics. Okay. You could pretty much walk around or, or move a little bit in the room and, and it will actually track where you are stationed or where you are seated uh, or moving in that case. Holy cow. How cool is that? Okay. So tell us about the TCM XA microphone. Mm. So as we mentioned, there's the, the <coughs> TCMX and TCMXA that you just mentioned. Now, yeah. how most of the mics work, all the mics work, there's a plenum box mm -hmm. and the TCMX plenum box can fit two TCMX mics and the TCMXA plenum box can fit two TCM mics plus it has a two-channel built-in amplifier. So cool, cool. This, this starts making it a, a, a more centralized single cable solution you'll basically have one cable from your uh, DSP running AVB to the TCMX plenum box. Okay. And from there, you'll pick up your two microphones, who again, and this is all CAT cable, right? So it's all easy CAT cable connections. The, even the two, uh, the two TCM mics, and like I mentioned, so the TCMX box can take two microphones. The TCMX A box also can take two mics. And it's all CAT cabling from the mics to the box. And even from the box to your speakers, you can also have a CAT cable running um, from the amplifier output to your uh, the Sono Biome speakers as well. And they plug in straight with a, with a network cable in the back. 
Oh, although that's right. This, the Sono uses cat input. That's right. So correct. it makes it ideal to go with that sort of microphone. Correct. Right? Okay. So it's it's not uh, from the amplifier to the speaker. It's not a a, a a network connection. They just use cat cabling to transmit the the, the powered oh, um, right. amplified speaker signal. Awesome. So the TCM XA is just a expander microphone to the normal TCM X, right? Uh, no. So the TCM XA is a slightly different plenum box okay. that allows you to also have the two amp channels on the box. Oh, right. So okay, TCM that X, makes sense. Yeah, okay. TCM X doesn't have amps, and TCM XA has, has, got has a, built -in a two channel amplifier. Okay, built -in. right. That is fantastic. So what then is the TCM XEX microphone? Well, that is simply just the microphone. Okay. So when you purchase the, the kits, the TCM-X is the microphone with the plenum box, or TCM-XA will be the, the amplified plenum box with one mic. And then to, to expand that unit to accommodate the second microphone, you'll basically just purchase a TCM-X-EX with it, and that's your, your additional second microphone that plugs directly onto the plenum box. So each plenum box will have two microphones connected to it oh, or right. a maximum of two microphones connected okay, to okay. it. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Sure, a lot of TCMs, a lot of Xs here, eh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fantastic. So when we look at, at I mean, let's, let's rather have a look at the tabletop microphones, the TTM-X. Can yes. you tell us a bit more about those? Yeah. So again, they actually a little bit smaller in size, I think they're about that, that size. Okay. And uh, they can pick up about four to five people in, a, uh, in, in maximum in, a, in table size. And uh, what we didn't actually speak about is just how to, how to choose which mic and, and how many mics. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. There's some, yes. some interesting things to, to work that out. Sure. So the TTM mics, for instance, if I had one on the table here, mm -hmm. it would basically sit in the center there. And the two of us or maybe a third person could speak naturally and it will track us in, in that space. Now, the TTM mic can also be placed as a end table mic, if you want to call it that. So it then only picks up on certain of its zones, um, and uh, you can also set it up to actually pick up omnidirectional MWA. So okay. the XEX versions of TCM and TTM, that's pretty just pretty much just the microphone as a, as a separate extender. Okay, so yeah. would it be safe to assume that the EX refers to it being an expander microphone? Correct, correct. Okay, yes. fantastic. But there's a, maybe another thing we can mention yeah. uh, on that point. You can also use the TCM XEX and the TCA, TTM X EX mics on the Devio platform. So oh. they're not just dedicated to the Tessera platform, they also actually work on the Devio mic platform as well. Oh, beautiful. We will be covering Devio one of these days, so hit like and subscribe because Devio is something we will be covering. Good. Fantastic, Mike. Thank you so much for that. So I also want to ask about the TCM 1A. I mean, the TCM 1, my apologies, mm. the pendant microphone. So Correct. like, where would that be used? And what is its primary use in that space? Yeah, so um, we'll get into a little bit more of the, of the technicality of which mics and, and how to choose them. But if you had higher ceilings mm -hmm. or if the client would prefer to have a, a golf ball style microphone, that's where the TCM 1 would come in. And that's the first generation of the beam tracking mics from, from Biome. Oh, right. Yes, so that's right. The difference, the big difference between TCM, TTM, X versions mm -hmm. and the TCM1 is the amount of zones that the microphone has in. Oh, so right. So the, the TCM1, the golf ball style mic, uh, only has three zones and they're 120 degree zones versus the, the 490 degree zones that's on the, the X versions of the mics. Oh, right. Of the poly mics. Okay. So again, when we refer to TCM1A, is that like an expander to the TCM1? Well, same as the TCMX and, and, and TCM, uh, TTMX, mm -hmm. the A version is an amplified version of the plenum box. Oh, so the A stands for amplifier. Correct. Okay, Correct. got it. And then similarly, there's the TCMX, uh, TCM1EX, which is also again an extender microphone that fits onto the, uh, the TCM1. And maybe one of the other differences is TCM1 will allow you to connect three microphones to the master plenum box. Mm -hmm. So you can have a TCM1 or a TCM1A with a TCM1EX and a TCM1EX versus the TCM-X versions, which is only two microphones maximum. Awesome. Per, per plenum box, right? Per plenum box? Per plenum box. Okay. So I'm going to ask a question totally out of the water here. So if we do it like that, how many channels on the DSP does it take up? So if we have one cable running into the master plenum and then it goes out to the expanders, if we have two expanders on the master, does it take up three channels of, of processing power in the DSP? Correct. 
And do you remember it's still a single cable? Yes. Right. So it's a single cable to the to the master plenum box. So each master plenum box, if you want to call it that, would have a single connection back to an AVB switch. Yes. And the AVB connection from the DSP, the show DSP, also back to the same switch. And thereby you'll have one mic channel used or one echo cancellation channel is pretty much more the, the, the accurate way of looking at it. Because, okay. because this is conferencing microphones, you do mm -hmm. need echo cancellation for each of the mics to be able to, to process them. So each mic will have a echo cancellation channel assigned okay. to it. So if you had three mics, you'll use up three channels of echo cancellation. Okay, and it doesn't matter how those mics are wired, they're still using a channel of echo Cor cancellation. Correct. correct. Okay, so just for people out there who don't know what AEC is, quick rundown. Acoustic echo cancellation. Hmm. And that's basically what allows uh, any video conferencing or teleconference system to have what's referred to as full duplex conferencing or right. full duplex communication. Okay. Meaning two parties can talk simultaneously without interfering with the other one's audio. Okay. Uh, so in essence, echo cancellation allows, if we were in one conference room and somebody's in, uh, on another, in another conference room in another building, on another continent, another country, whatever the case is, um, if I speak in this room, my voice is on their speakers, Yes. being picked up by their microphones, being sent back to my speakers, being picked up by my microphones. Oh, that could cause an infinite loop, right? Correct. Ah. So echo cancellation is exactly that. That's literally what it means. It cancels that feedback loop that would take place uh, between two communication systems. And that allows for full duplex conferencing uh, or full duplex communication. It allows you to speak simultaneously both directions. Without that echo happening. Correct. Okay. So um, when choosing a DSP, make sure you've got AEC. Correct. Awesome. Now, just to expand on that, half mm. duplex would be like a walkie-talkie, for instance, yes. or a, or a two-way communication radio. You would press a button, speak, release the button. It would be transmitted to, to that person in that, in that sequence. When that person's then ready to speak, when you've released your button, they press the button and they speak back. That's half duplex. Ah, oh, so old school. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Thanks for that, Mike. I'm sure Perfect. a lot of people there don't know what it is, but awesome. Now we do. So... I'm going to ask a really simple question now. On these Parlay microphones, what is the pickup range? So that's where the, the calculator tool comes in. Ah, is there a calculator tool available there, for everyone? There is one, yes. Okay. Uh, on Biome's uh, Cornerstone webpage, uh, if you just search into, into any of your search engines, uh, Biome Parlay Mic Calculator, mm -hmm. you'll actually get the, the, the links to each of the different calculators. So oh. there's a different calculator for each of the mics, for the seating and the table mics. We'll drop that in the comments for you guys to look at later. And basically, it's, um, it allows you to design the room of the, the, the size of the room, mm -hmm. the height. You can even adjust some of the acoustic properties in the room because that also affects how wide the microphones will pick up. Oh, so there's yes, a few settings you mm. need to just place into the calculator tool. And it will tell you how many mics, more or less where to place them, uh, how far they'll pick up. And there's even a bit of a simulation in there that you can listen to to what that room would sound like based on the acoustic information that you've provided. So wow. fair, good, wow, poor really? acoustics, uh, excellent acoustics, whatever the case is. That is really cool. So that little calculator actually makes it really easy for like an installer to just quickly sort of on the fly calculate how many mics he needs based on the dimensions of the room, Correct. the acoustics and the ceiling height. Correct. Beautiful. Yes. And you can then obviously select which one, you know, do you want table mics, ceiling mics, pendant mics, whatever the case is. You select the one that you, that you, want to start with and look at and uh, you put in the dimensions of the room and the acoustics and say calculate okay simple as that okay great so the pickup range is designed more around the the shape and the acoustics of the room so True. it's not like a normal microphone where it has a pickup range of x this here it's actually set according to the parameters of the room that it's working in correct okay correct. because the beam forming and beam tracking and we didn't really speak much about about the details of that yes but it's exactly th what it means. So it basically shapes the way that the, the pickup of the microphone functions based on the acoustics of the, of the room. Oh. And then it sort of directs that beam. So it first shapes it and then directs the beam to where the source is coming from. Okay. So, so just to sort of round that off. So when the microphone has a 360 degree coverage, all right, then it, it hears someone talking. It will take that energy that it was using for 360 degree coverage, now shape it and focus it on the person talking. Well, yes, but per zone, remember, because there's, there's four zones or three zones on the mic. Yes, So correct. in each zone, 
it would calculate where's the loudest part, shape the, the, the pickup pattern of the microphone. Okay. Point it towards that direction, and if it moves, it will it will start following, tracking it. Okay, so if I move from one zone to the next, that second zone then obviously does the same thing. It recalculates that it's coming from there, and it doesn't worry about the previous zone. It now moves into its own zone, and then just focuses that beam on the person talking. Correct. This is beautiful technology. Correct. I don't know why all microphones don't use this. Then we don't have to worry <laughs> about pickups and patterns and <laughs> this and that, right? Yeah. That's amazing. Okay, so... Let's chat a bit about AVB. So I know that AVB is the protocol that this uses. But for the guys out there who don't know what AVB is, can you give us a brief definition? Yes. So AVB stands for Audio Video Bridging. And okay. Biomp has implemented AVB in the Tessera range of products. Um, I, I, I like to use the word quite heavily, but it, it's pretty much, it runs on AVB. Yeah, it's almost like a standard for them. It, it is the standard for the Tessera system. So yeah. and most of the, the Tessera products, well, all the Tessera products works on the AVB protocol, um, the audio video, video bridging protocol. And they also even have some, some video devices as well that works on it. But the mm -hmm. protocol is an open source protocol. All oh, right. It was designed by the guys that write everything, uh, all, the, all the specifications for uh, anything and everything internet, the IEEE. Oh, yes, I've heard that before. Correct. Yes. And that, so AVB is an 802.1 standard. Okay. The same as what any networking standards would, would be that falls under the 802.1 categories. Uh, it is a standard. And there's four different versions to the standard or, f or four different subheadings to the, to the AVB standard, which governs um, how much bandwidth is being used, uh, how packets are being sent. It guarantees that packets and information sent over the network will arrive at the, the, the correct time at the correct destination and be allowed sort of through without any, any hesitation or any, any blockages. So mm. it guarantees bandwidth, guarantees time synchronization um, so that your audio is on time. If you think about um, audio in that sense or, or video, yes. When you when you opening up a web browser on your on your website, or open up a web browser and you open up a website, or you open up an email, that information comes in as packets, yes. data packets, like mm -hmm. any like any data would transfer over a network, but it does not have to appear in sequence. So you can bring that information in, and your computer will reassemble the information and then display the information for you to to view. Right, okay, I've okay. got that. That yes. makes sense. So, yes. so when we talk about web browsing, internet, information coming to, to the laptop, emails, and SMSs, WhatsApps, Telegrams, whatever the case is, that information does not have to appear in sequence. It doesn't have to be packet one, packet two, packet three, packet four, packet five. It can be packet one, packet eight, packet three, packet ten, packet six, and it would receive it and reassemble it. Oh, right, okay. But I can't do that with audio and video. Because it's linear. Okay. So I can't sp speak word one in my sentence, then word 10, and then word five, and then word seven. No, it's not going to make sense. Correct. Mm. So audio and video data has to arrive in sequence. And that's what AVB does. It guarantees the time delivery of those packets that they will arrive at the correct time and in sequence. Okay. So just to wrap this up. Um, let's say you watch DSTV on a rainy night. Sometimes you get those sort of lip sync issues where the guy will talk and then mm -hmm. a microsecond later, some audio will follow what he says. And although you don't really notice it at first, it can be quite off-putting. Does AVB sort of stop that? It, so you don't get sort correct. of lip sync issues. So the audio arrives with the video and it's there and you can watch it and there's Co none correct. of this meh, 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 and then the audio yeah. follows after that. 100%. Okay, got it. That's okay, exactly that's a what cool protocol. Yes. So yeah, uh, AVB pretty much is implemented across all the all the uh, Biomp to share devices, and uh, it makes things easy. So, as an example, for instance, there's a, a few kits now available, uh, bundles available of Tessera TCM X, TTM oh, yes. X mics mm. with speakers with the DSP, uh, and a quick little QR code that you can scan that allows you to. Once you've purchased that kit, installed it for, for that room, you know, two speakers, four speakers, two mics, four mics, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. Network switches in there, the AVB protocols are all loaded. 
you'd literally plug that all in. Even the cables to connect it up is in the box. Uh, so it really, you purchase the, the kit, you go to sites and you install it. Once it's installed, you scan the QR code and you go through the little app on the PC and actually set up the the, the configuration file for the, the audio DSP. Awesome. So they've made it really easy and, yes, and they have. AVB is central to, to assist in, in making those audio channels flow uh, and, and configured. Nice. We will be discussing those kits the minute we get them. Um, so please, again, like and subscribe so that you don't miss these when they come out because this is a game changer in the AV industry, guys. I promise you. Yes. All right. Lovely. So how do we get AVB within a network? What are the sort of prerequisites for an AVB network? So AVB is still available only on selected switches okay. as a protocol uh, because the switch manufacturer has to write the protocol to, f to work on the network switches. And uh, so you have to have a switch that is AVB capable right? and then you load the AVB license on it. So okay. for instance, the TCM X range of, uh, um, TC5 range of, of uh, network switches from Biome, yes. uh, the Connect um, range, they five five port switches with four ports of PoE, all five ports have AVB on them already and those are the ones that are included in the kit. And right. okay. they will pretty much allow you the AVB communication directly out of the box without any configurations. So that is a switch dedicated for AVB. Okay, Correct. so let's say we don't want to use the Biamp Connect. Can we use another brand? Yes, there's, there's Maybe a, Netgear? There is, definitely. Oh, okay. um, Netgear actually has recently announced a whole new range of a dedicated AV switches. Ah, I see. I see. Right. Dedicated, right? Correct. And those dedicated switches will pretty much support almost any of the audio and video protocols that we have in the industry today. Uh, they've been designed to support all those protocols. So that's a, a dedicated range of switch. Um, oh, beautiful. I think it's called the M-series um, switches. Nice. Definitely so need to check that out. You can, definitely. Okay, so I know this might be a bit of a dumb question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What makes AVB different to Dante? The fact that it's an open-based protocol. Okay. And it's an international standard and it's internationally recognized by IT, right? So it's not, an, not just an audio or an AV standard. It is an IT standard. Oh, right. If that okay. makes sense. Yes. So it's not something that's, that is only designed for, for AV, right? Because here's the, here's the thing. There's a, a second part to AVB that's referred to as TSN, time-sensitive networking. Oh, because okay. the same way that we say with audio and video, we want dedicated packets to arrive at a certain time. There's certain other processes that are also required. And therefore, TS, the TSN side, the time-sensitive networking side of AVB, also allows for those other processes and other uh, things to take place at dedicated times. Right. And that's the big difference. AVB is not just an a AV protocol for our industry for audio and video. It is an IT standard. Wow. You learn and something new every that's day. The, that's the big difference. Nice. Okay. That, that's really cool. So I also want to find out, okay, so now we have an, an AVB set up on the go. It's been installed. Mm -hmm. We have a boardroom with all AVB going, and our switch is quite far away. So do we have a, a, a distance limitation on the CAT cable that we use with AVB networks? Definitely. And okay. that distance limitation is quite simple. All right. It is a network distance limitation. Right. Which is 330 feet or 100 meters. And that's standard CAT cabling for network protocol. Okay. So that's not an AVB limitation. That's a network it's protocol a network, limitation. Network limitation. Okay. Correct. All right. Yeah. So remember that, guys. Please. Can't go wrap yourself around the earth with all that cable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is actually really cool. I didn't know that. Um, another question I also wanted to ask. Um, are there parlay mics? when they've installed and the system is running? Are they always on? Can you switch them off? Or as an example, I've just had a meeting and I've shut down my computer, my system, and I leave, and now somebody else wants to come in and have a private meeting without a computer. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to shut those microphones off automatically? Do they shut off automatically, or, or how does that work? Is it programming within the DSP? Yeah, this, the short answer is, what would you like them to do? Oh. Because we can program the DSP to, to do various functions. Okay. 
So when the, the red LED is on on the mic, it means the mic is muted, which means it will not actually transmit its audio to somewhere. In terms of it being on all the time, well, yes, as long as the DSP and the network switch is on and is providing PoE to the plenum box that powers the, the system, then the mic is on. Okay. Right? It is in, in, an, in a, a powered up state. Oh, I see. Okay. But depending on how the conference room or the meeting room and boardroom has been set up, it would depend whether the mic is actually transmitting its audio to somewhere or not. Ah, you see, that that I think is, is what we're looking for. Okay, yeah. so if the mic is on green and it shows that it's on, does that mean it is transmitting to somewhere? Not necessarily. Okay. Because if you're setting it up as a conferencing mic for a VC or a TC conference, yeah. a teleconference or a video, video conference, then you have to be in the video conference for the information that's being captured by the mic, the sound being captured, to actually be transmitted to the other side of the of the call right okay uh, because how we set the dsps up is that the mic information only goes to the far side of the of that call okay uh, that's why i said it depends on what the setup of the of the system okay. is so i think the simple way would just to use like maybe a tech one switch it on and off when you walk, you walk into the room that's the, by far the easiest way as you press switch it off the microphone goes red to show you that it's off it's not picking up anything it's not transmitting anything correct switch it on picks up and it transmits Correct. Okay, cool. And that is a mute on mute off state in, in its simplest form. Okay. All right. Okay. Pretty easy. All right. Um, so lastly, the spacing between the microphones. How do we calculate that spacing? Well, again, that comes back down to the calculation tool. Okay. It will determine what the spacing of the mic should be based on the information you've inputted into the calculation tool. Right. Okay. So if you, if you know that your room acoustics are pretty good, um, then it would probably start spacing the mics a little bit, a little bit far, further apart um, based on those room acoustics. Now, as an example, uh, if you can imagine how, what the size of a 24-seater boardroom is, mm -hmm. we've managed to do very successful setups with our clients of two microphones, two TCM X microphones to the ceiling mics in a boardroom covering 24 people. Two microphones covering 24 people? Correct. Wow. But that's Oof, good that's room acoustics and uh, a good setup of the system. Yeah, sort of like ideal. Yes. Ideal. Okay, understood. Okay, well, that's still, that's pretty cool. All right. Um, so lastly, I just want to wrap this up for everyone watching. The heart of this whole system is the Biamp DSP. Correct. So all the programming and everything is handled within the DSP. Correct. And I remember seeing with, uh, with uh, um, one of our staff members here, while they were programming it, we had a little block on screen. And we could see how the microphone tracks the person as they walk around the table. So all of that is handled within the DSP software. Correct. Okay. 100%, yeah. So the, the Tessera um, software package mm -hmm. that you use to configure the DSP, I always explain it this way. The DSP is like a computer without an operating system. Okay. Or a computer with, with a BIOS but no operating system. Okay, makes sense. You have to load the operating system. And in this case, the operating system would be the Tessera design file. Okay. That links the input blocks to the output blocks through the different forms and and blocks of processing that you want to that you want to achieve, uh, mixing them, uh, compressors, limiters, equalizers, gates, whatever you want to program with it. Because uh, again, the Tessera platform or the Tessera DSPs are open architecture, so you can place whichever DSP processing block you want to place mm -hmm. anywhere in the signal chain from the input to the output. All oh, right. And that configuration file gets loaded onto the DSP um, or the computer then. Okay. And that's what then dictates what happens. So yes, the, the Tessera Forte DSP or the Tessera um, Server DSP, mm -hmm. those are the brains. They, okay. they control what, what happens and what takes place. So they will need a Tessera Forte DSP or server in order for these microphones to work correctly on an AVB network. Correct, 100%. And that's, again, where the bundles come in. Mm -hmm. The bundles include the DSP, the switch, the microphones, the cables, uh, all the stuff. Even a hole saw to cut the hole in the ceiling to fit the mic into the ceiling. Ah, free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, actually quite genius of Biomp, I would say. Yeah. And lastly, what I can mention about mm -hmm. the bundles, and it specifically pertains to the bundles, to okay. the, the, the Parley uh, or the Tashera uh, DSP bundles. Um, you'll see actually on the Microsoft Team Store, or the Microsoft Store, there are bundles to buy them to share bundles on there. And those bundles are actually Teams 
certified. Ah, team certified. Correct. So they yes. buy and went through the whole process and mm -hmm. they are actually certified to work on, on teams as a complete kit. Wonderful. Okay, so we will show a video of that coming up as well um, at a later stage. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Michael, thank you for very much for joining me in studio today. Really good to have you again. Guys, please like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we will do unboxings of those bundles that come in. And believe me, guys, you'll be blown away. So please like and subscribe uh, on our YouTube channel. Also head over to our uh, Alpha Tech website, www.alpha-tec.co.za. Click on the training tab and you'll see a whole bunch of previous videos we've done there as well. Please enjoy, guys. From me, thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Noel. Thanks for having me again. Pleasure. Thanks, and guys. See you soon. See you soon. Bye.